Now that we know how to find the vertex of a standard form quadratic function, we're going to talk about two different ways to graph it. So the first way that we are going to graph a quadratic function is to take one that is in standard form and to rewrite it into vertex form. So to do that, we must complete the square. And essentially what that means is we're going to take this equation or this function and we're going to write it so that it's in vertex form, meaning we're going to have possibly some number here and then x plus or minus some number and then plus or minus some number. And of course y equals or f of x equals. And this part in here will be a perfect square, which is why it's called completing the square. So to do that, the first thing that we're going to do, and it seems kind of weird when we do this, we're going to say f of x equals, and we're going to kind of group the 2x squared and the 20x, and then we're going to leave a plus blank. And then we still have this plus 42, but that's going to be on the outside. And then we're going to put minus blank. Now this is always going to be plus, this is always going to be minus. And again, the reason that we use plus here is because we're going to have a perfect square. And whether it's plus or minus, that third term will always be a plus. Because two positives make a positive and two negatives when you multiply them make a positive. So now what we're going to do is we need to kind of figure out what's going to go in that space. But before I can do that, I need to know what I'm dealing with here. So I'm actually going to take a two out of this. So I've got x squared plus 10x plus blank. And when I do that, it's really easy to forget that over here, I need to, whatever I end up adding here, which remember is gonna be multiplied by two, I need to subtract over here, otherwise I've broken mathematical laws. So I'm gonna put two next to that so I remember that I have to multiply it by two. Now, you might be wondering, how do I figure out what goes in the blank? Well, all we have to do is take the B value and divide it by two. And remember, the B value is the middle guy, the one that is multiplied by x. It's always the one multiplied by x. So here, oops, and then we're gonna divide it by two and square it. So here my b value is 10, so 10 divided by 2 squared is 5, 5 squared, 25. So 25 is going to go here and also here. Now, what has that done for us? Well, I'll tell you. I've got f of x. I've got a 2 on the outside. On the inside, this is now a perfect square, and that perfect square is x, and then it's whatever sign this is, so in this case that is a plus, and then whatever this number was, which in this case is a five, x plus five quantity squared. Now I'm not going to multiply it all back out, but essentially we're saying if we took x plus five times x plus five and foiled it, we would end up back here. And I tell you that it's true, and you can take my word for it, or you can do the math and check it out. Now on the outside, I have plus 42, and I have here 2 times 25, which is 50. So plus 42 and minus 50. When I combine those together, I end up with minus 8. So now I haven't done anything really to help me graph it yet, except that I put it in a form that is helpful. So I'm going to take this helpful form and start using it to graph this function. So the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, because I'm in vertex form, is to find the vertex. Now, the vertex form is fantastic because it gives me the vertex here and here. Now, a lot of people make a mistake and they say, well, that's a positive five and a negative eight. And you're really, really close, but remember that this sign is always going to be the opposite. So it looks like a positive five, which means the vertex is at negative five, negative eight. So over here, 
negative 5, negative 8 is right here. Then I'm going to write the equation for the axis of symmetry. And remember, the equation for the axis of symmetry is an equation, so I can't just say the number. I have to say x equals, and remember, it's always whatever the x value of the vertex is. So x equals negative 5. So now I'm going to have this dotted line at negative 5. And remember, what does that dotted line tell me? It says anything that happens on the right can be reflected to the left, or anything that happens on the left can be reflected to the right. Now, we need to have some values to reflect to each side. Um, so you have a choice. You can just pick a random value and plug it in and see what happens. Or you can, of course, find the zeros or the solutions, which is what's going to be helpful later on because obviously our whole goal is to figure out the solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the equation equal to zero. And then I'm trying to find out what x is, so I'm going to add 8 to each side. And then I'm going to divide by 2 on each side. And then I'm going to take the square root of each side. The square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. And of course, the square root of x plus 5 squared is x plus 5. So what that tells me is I can take x plus 5 and set it equal to 2 and solve by subtracting 5 from each side to get x equals negative 3. And I can say x plus 5 is equal to negative 2. And I can subtract 5 from each side and get x equals negative 7. Now what does that tell me? That tells me I have a point negative 3, 0. And I have a point negative 7, 0. So negative 3, 0, negative 7, 0. Now if I want to, I can find another point by simply plugging in an x value of say negative 2 or negative 1 or 0. But to me this is good enough. So I'm going to connect the dots and there is my parabola. So the way that we did that last example, not the way I would normally do it. It's a little bit more complicated because you have to complete the square and we haven't practiced that much. So really, if I had to actually graph this myself, I'm just going to find the vertex using the vertex formula we discussed in the last video. So I'm going to find that x is the opposite of b, so positive 2 over 2a. And again, I'm assuming you've watched the last video, so I'm not explaining this in great detail. But I find the x value is negative 1. The y value says find f of negative 1. So take negative, negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3. Be super careful on this one. There's a lot of negatives. This tells me to take negative 1 squared first, which is positive 1, and then stick a negative on it. So now I have negative 1. Then I have negative 2 times negative 1, which is positive 2, and then plus 3. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1 plus 3 is 4, which means my vertex is simply negative 1, 4. So negative 1, 4. And then again, axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 1. That point right there. I can find the x or y intercepts, or I can just plug in numbers and find points. So let's just plug in 1 and see what happens. f of 1 gives me negative 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 3. Negative, and then 1 squared is 1, so it's negative 1 because of this negative. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 3. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So I have a point at 1, 0. Use the axis of symmetry to pop that in the other direction as well. And now let's plug in something else to get a better idea of what it looks like. I'm going to choose 3 and hope that works. So negative 
3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 3 gives me, oops, I'm going to show it up here just in case 3 is off my graph. Uh, negative 9 minus 6 plus 3 gives me negative 15 plus 3, which is negative 12. We'll just go with it. 3 comma negative 12, kind of down here. That's 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left of the axis of symmetry, down here at 12, and mirror that point. And that gives me a really good idea of what that parabola looks like. You choose the method on this one. Go ahead and graph it, uh, then press play to see how you did. So again, I'm going to use my vertex formula. The vertex formula says to find the x, take negative b, so the opposite of 6, over 2a. 6 over 6 is 1. To find the y value, I'm plugging in 1. So I'm taking 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 1. 3 times 1 squared, so 3 times 1 is 3, minus 6 plus 1. 3 minus 6 is negative 3, plus 1 is negative 2. So I got negative 2, 1 comma negative 2, which is where I'm going to put my first point. And then again, I would write my axis of symmetry so that I know whatever I find on one side, I can reflect to the other side. Then I'm just going to find some more points. So again, I can either work to find the intercepts or I can just plug in whatever value I want. I'm going to plug in the value of 3. No, I'm going to plug in the value of 2 just to be safe because these numbers are going to get big. So I'm going to take 3 times 2 squared minus 6 times 2 plus 1. So that's 3 times 4 or 12 minus 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1. So I actually plugged in 2 and got out 1. And then I can reflect that to the other side. So I should have just gone with 3 from the beginning. 3 times 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 1. Again, I like to talk out loud when I'm work working through a problem, so feel free to press pause and plug that into your calculator. But I have 3 times 3 squared, so 3 times 9, or 27 minus 6 times 3, so minus 18, plus 1. 27 minus 18 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10. So when I plugged in 3, I got out 10. And then again, I can reflect that to the opposite side. And you can see, this is what my parabola would look like.